Good day, fish tankers. Today we're going to talk about test kits. We have the liquid test kits on the one hand here, and then we have the strip test kits. Now, some people say you've got to use the liquid test kits. They are the more accurate ones. Forget about the test strips. They rubbish, throw them away. And there are those out there who say, no, it's only some test strips that are rubbish. Test strips are actually okay. So how are we going to find out? We're simply going to test all these test kits out on one of my aquariums and we're going to see if the test results correlate with each other. If that's something that interests you, stick around. Okay guys, now firstly you can see why somebody would rather want to use the test strips because here we've got the, the JBL test strips once again for your American viewers we don't have aquarium co-op products here so Corey if you're listening send some our way and this is a JBL this is something that I've used that I found effective not the test strips I've never used them but I used the liquid test and it tests a number of parameters you've got nitrate you've got nitrite you've got general hardness you've got carbonate hardness, pH, carbon dioxide and even chlorine in the test strip here which is the same that the test strips over here, the tetra test strips also test. Now the tetra test strips have reached their expiry date last year. I'm going to test them as well and see if they correlate but if I don't you can't really say it's a tetra test strips because they are past the expiry date but normally these things these dry goods last until way past the expiry date. So I just have to tell you that. And here we have the JBL, not the test strip, the master liquid test kit. And here we have a lot of parameters. We've got pH, KH, we've got nitrite, nitrate. We also got carbon dioxide. And what this little one, the liquid test kit's got, what the test strips don't have, is it, hasn't got, it has got a test kit for ammonia, especially if you're running in a new tank or there's sudden trouble. That's an important one to have. You don't have them on the test strips. There's a reason for it. It's chemically a more complicated test kit, I believe. And you can get separate ammonia strips for that at Aquarium Co-op if you're in America. I haven't seen ammonia strips here in South Africa. But that's one advantage of a liquid test kit. But on the other hand, here you can, you can uh, test for GH, general hardness on the strip. And for some reason, in the liquid test kit, the general hardness option does not exist, so that is kind of weird. So that's the that's one uh, discrepancy between the strips and the liquid test kits. And then also the price. Here, this one I got for 825 Rand. That's actually a very good price. Usually they're just over 1,000 Rand. Got that over there from Peter at Brackenfell Pets. Um, it's not a sponsored link. I paid for all these products. Nobody gave them for, to me for free. And then for the same brand, JBL, the test strips, it's only 255 Rand. So it's a lot less expensive also for the test strips as opposed to the liquid test. And then the obvious difference as well, it takes a lot longer with these droppers and, 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 and vials with the liquid test kits than it takes with the test strips that you simply stick into your water and wait. So I can understand why people would like these little, little fellows. So let's get testing. Okay guys, excuse my handwriting, but here are the test results. If we look at the liquid test there on the, rest, on the left, the KH came out as, as 6, 
and with the strips the JBL liquid test was 6, the JBL strips still 6 and on the Tetra strips to the right it also came out as 6. Now there with pH on the liquid test kit the JBL 7.5 on the strips of the JBL test kit 7.6 but it's calibrated differently. There is a color for 7.4 and one for 7.6 so 7.5, 7.6 much of a muchness more or less the same thing it's probably 7.5 as well because as I've said it's the closest to 7.6 somewhere between the 7.4 and 7.6 re reading so that's accurate if I look at the Tetra test strips as I've said it's been a year expired that reads a little bit different 7.2 but between 7.5, 7.6, 7.2, that's a very small uh, margin there. It's not going to affect the fish in any way. So unless you want to get uber nerdy about that, that's not also not a difference to worry about. Now then if we go down to the nitrite, that's the one that's highly toxic to fish. On most of your test kits, it should always test zero. On the left, the JBL liquid test kit measures in very fine increments and uh, the lowest one is smaller than 0 0.01 nitrite so zero for all intents of purposes which corresponds to the reading on the test strips and then nitrite that's something that's handy to determine if water changes are needed there's hardly any nit nitrite in O3 detectable in that little beta tank that deep substrate does do its job on the JBL test kit it's 1 ppm that's almost almost clear almost clear not as not almost the color of 1 ppm but there's a, it's not 100 percent clear so i just wrote it down as 1 ppm and on the test strips the nitrate doesn't show up it, it just shows up as zero because on the test strips the nitrate for no3 only starts reading at only registers at 10 ppm so anything below that isn't going to register and it's not something you need to be worried about so what conclusions can we draw from all of this so guys, that's it. We went through the exercise of testing several water parameters in one of my aquariums using two different kinds of test strips and comparing it with a JBL uh, liquid test kit. And what we found in the end, there's a very negligible difference between the two, also allowing for the fact that the test strips don't quite test in that small increments from the liquid test kit, the JBL one for, uh, for that matter, tests in. So if you're going to use the test strips, you're not going to go wrong. So if we look at the amount of time that these test strips take as compared to the liquid test, test kits, unless you uh, want to really nerd out like I sometimes do about nitrate levels in my aquarium to check if a substrate is doing its work and you really want to have small measurements of nitrate smaller than 10 ppm, then I would say you need the liquid test kit, the JBL version, the Sierra test kit for that matter is also not going to measure, measure in such small increments. The pH differences in along with test kits are negligible as is the KH so that really wouldn't worry me and the test strips both the JBL test strips and the Tetra test strips are going to give you fair warning if you have nitrite in your aquarium it would just be nice to have a test strip for ammonia as well. I uh, know there's one in America of Aquarium Co-op. Once again, get the stuff over here. So I would say just for the general aquarist, the myth that test, test strips are inaccurate and that they are rubbish, I think it's not completely a myth. It comes from a lot of cheap products that's been flooding the market, uh, some from, the, from Asia and so on. And there's been a lot of cheap test strips on the market and they are not accurate. But for these two brands that I've tried, the JBL in my hand and the Tetra test strips, they are easily accurate enough for the normal aquarist need. So in that case, I really don't know why you're going to use the time to use the liquid test kits, unless you really have something that you want to find out if you're doing some sort of an experiment. So I think the JBL and the Tetra test strips, what I've tested here, they are perfectly adequate. If you're stuck around for as long as this, here's a little bonus tip. Uh, just want to give you something extra. It's not anything new. I can't claim credit for it. Um, I've seen it in several fish keeping videos, I think even in aquarium co-op. If you want to stretch your bucks at the end of a month, really to the end, let's, see, let's say you have one test strip left and you have two tanks to test, you can just cut the test strip down the length of a test strip like that 
if you have steady enough hands, which I don't often have. But if you cut it down the length like that, then you have two test strips and that is a little hack to stretch, stretch your test strips out until the end of the month. So that's it from me guys. Please tell me what you have found with liquid tests as opposed to test strips. Which do you think works better for you? Please give the channel a like if you found this information useful. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. And until we see each other again, keep taking care of those domestic denizens of the deep. Mm -hmm.